Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Keith Gebhardt with Learn Tech Training and in this video we're going to discuss how to configure DHCP on our networks, okay? Now, there are two ways we could configure DHCP. One being we could use a dedicated DHCP server. The other, we could configure our router to run DHCP. Now, you're wondering why do we have four different topologies here? Well, a lot of people keep asking me, how do you configure DHCP on an inner VLAN routed network? So I'm going to show you how to do it both ways. We're going to, over here, learn how to configure DHCP in an inner VLAN routing environment on the router and the same environment using a dedicated DHCP server. Now, please do not forget to subscribe and like this video. And if you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will get back to you, okay? So let's go ahead and open up a blank Cisco Packet Tracer Lab and begin. All right, guys, now that we have our labs open, let's go ahead and take a 2811 router. We're going to grab a uh, 2960 switch while we're at it. We're going to grab a PC, which is a desktop under there, and just grab a laptop and drop it there. Okay, so now we need to connect the laptop to the router on FA01 to the Fast Ethernet 0 port on the laptop. And then we grab 00 on the router to any port on the switch. It does not matter which port we connect to the switch because it is all one broadcast domain, okay? So now that we have these or plugged in at least, let's go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and take or make two notes here. So this is going to be the 192.168.1.0 slash 24, which is a Class C subnet mask. And then we're also going to make this the 192.168.2.0 network with a uh, Class C subnet mask as well. So let's go ahead and configure this router so these devices can communicate together, right? So we're not going to do any basic switch configuration. We're just going to configure DHCP. So we're going to go configure terminal. Interface FA00 is going to be IP address. Uh, let me just take a look what I do. 00 is going to be the dot one. So 192.168.1.1 is the default gateway address. And then we're going to do no shut. And then we're going to do an interface FA0 slash 1, which is going to be IP address 192.168.2.1 for the default gateway. Again, Class C subnet mask, no shutdown. And now we need to configure our um, DHCP pool. So if I do IP DHCP, let's go ahead and just question mark that so you can see what it is. Now, we're not relaying anything. We're going to set up a pool, okay? The pool is where it tells the, uh, the router to act as a server, if you will. And then you could also notice we could exclude addresses. Now, in here, we're not going to exclude any addresses, but you may want to. You know, If you have uh, a couple web servers sticking off the end of this and you're running DHCP, you want those web servers statically. You don't want those um, leases of the DHCP address on those web servers changing. So you're not going to use uh, DHCP on your web servers. So that would be an instance where you would exclude addresses. But again, we are not going to for this example. So I'm just going to type in pool and then again you need to type in a name. So we're going to do IP DHCP pool dot one for the dot one network. And then we need to set a default router. Okay, this is essentially your default gateway. So 192.168.1.1. And then we need to give it its network address. So the network address for this network is 192.168.1.0 with a class C subnet mask, right? 20 uh, side of notations 24. And then we could go ahead and exit that. But now we only have one side working. So if I go ahead and click this computer desktop and I configure, I just hit DHCP, it's going to work, right? We're getting everything loaded. But this guy is not configured yet. So we need to configure the right side of the 2.0 network to have a DHCP pool. So let's go ahead and do a IP DHCP pool name dot, oh, not name, just dot two. And then we're going to do a default router 192.168.2.1 again, because that is the default gateway we gave that interface. And then we're going to do the network address, which is 192.168.2.0 with a 24-sider uh, notation, which is a Class C subnet mask, okay? So we could exit this. We could do right, and let's go ahead and take a look at this laptop, see if we got a DHCP connection. And here you go, you can see we got the DHCP connection. And again, I like verifying my connections are working. So 192.168. Let's just see what he was able to get is 1.2. So we will type 1.2. And it's going to send its ARP broadcast out. 
find the MAC addresses to the IP addresses, and bada bing, bada boom, guys, we are running. So that is DHCP configured on a router, so the router's acting as a DHCP server. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw that up there in the corner. So the same scenario where we have only two subnets, right? We're going to go ahead and create another router. This is going to be the 2811 router again. We're going to grab two switches this time, one there, one there. And let me just flatten it a little bit so it's not taking up too much space. We're gonna grab a we're gonna grab a couple desktops just so we could see that it's accessing multiple devices, a couple laptops here. And then let's go ahead and connect these devices. Oh, I forgot my server, right? We need a server to act as a DNS. Now we can connect these. So the server is going to go into any port on the switch. Again, it does not matter. We are not separating broadcast domains on the switch. We are not VLANing these switches. So it does not matter. All ports on a Cisco switch by default are what? VLAN 1. So one broadcast domain. We don't need to worry about it. Let's go ahead and plug the switch into uh, port 0, 0 on the router again. And then we're going to go ahead and plug the router from 0, 1 into the right side. Again, it does not matter which switch ports you use. Right into the laptop, and again, right into the laptop, okay? So the first thing we need to do is um, set up our DHCP server. So I'm just gonna make a note here, DHCP server, okay? In fact, I'm gonna underscore it so we can do it again. So I'm going to set up this DHCP server. I'm going to go to the desktop and the static address. Remember, our servers, we want static addressing so they don't uh, change lease edges. So the DHCP lease can time out or reset it. If a device isn't being recognized over the network long enough, it'll get rid of it and give it to somebody else. Okay. So we don't want this address change. So we're going to keep this static. So it's going to be 192.168.1.2 because I want to use .1 for my default gateway. 192.168.1.1. And we're not worrying about DNS server. We do not need to configure that at this time. So now that we configured our desktop, our physical Ethernet card on this server, we need to go to services, DHCP, and we're just going to rename this uh, dot one network. Default gateway is going to be 192.168.1.1. And then we're going to start our IP addresses at three, since this guy is dot two, we don't want to overlap him. And we're just going to give it, I don't know, 20 different IP addresses, okay? So I'm going to save this. It's going to create a new one because you can't, for some reason, delete the default one on uh, Cisco Packet Tracer here. And now we need to create a second one. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in dot two network. This again will be two dot one. And we will change this guy to two dot three. Now he can be 2.2 because he's only he doesn't have a server, right? So again, we will use 20 addresses and we're going to add that and we are good. So the only thing else we have to do is turn this on. Now when I turn that on, if I go to any of these computers, you're going to see that they indeed do, in fact, acquire an IP address through DHCP. And again, if I check him out, he will again acquire his DHCP addressing, okay? Now, whoop, I got to click DHCP. So now that they acquired their DHCP, we need to configure the router to pass that information along. And it is simple, simple, simple. So we just go no, enable, configure terminal. And we need to configure the interfaces as usual. Interface FA00, that's going to be IP address uh, 192.168.1.1.255.255.255.0. And now we need to give what's called the IP helper, okay? Help address, IP helper address. And that's going to be the address of our DHCP server. And we gave that an address of 192.168.1.2. Okay. Now, once we do that, we're good. We just need to do no shutdown. All right. Now we need to do interface FA01, IP address 192.168.2.1.255.255.255.0. And then again, IP helper address 192.168.1.2 for that server address. And then no shutdown. Okay. So now that that's up, do right just so it saves it. And we could go ahead and give this a minute. It's going to take a little bit. You can see these link status lights are still coming on. So let's just give that a moment here. I'm going to pause the video so we don't waste any time. And now that it came back on, we could go ahead and grab our laptops, switch them over to DHCP. And there you go. You can see all the information filled in nicely, okay? 
We go back to this guy, hit the ACP, and it fills in nicely. Now, if you ever get a some kind of reason it, it failed, it didn't go through, that's most likely because it didn't it didn't register, it didn't pull all the information over yet. It, sometimes with Packet Tracer, the ACP works slow, so don't panic, just give it a couple minutes and it usually goes through for you. So the next example we need to do is showing how to um, implement DHCP on a VLAN network, okay? So inner VLAN routing network, we want to add DHCP. So we're going to, again, take a 2811 router, and we're going to grab our switch, which is my favorite, the 2960, and then we're just going to grab three PCs, okay? And one, two, and uh, where's my third one? Three. Now, go ahead and do yourselves a favor so we can save time. Just go ahead and copy this, Control-C, and then V, and grab the highlighted gray ones because we're going to put those over there and do something with those in a minute. So the first thing we need to do is program the switch or configure the switch. So we're going to do enable config T, VLAN 10, name left, okay, VLAN 20, name middle, and VLAN 30, name right, okay, just so you can keep track of them. We're going to do interface FA, um, no, we're not going to do an interface FA. We're going to do, yes, interface range FA 0, 1 through 8, switch port mode access, and then switch port access uh, VLAN 10. And then we're going to exit that. We're going to do interface range FA 0, 9 through 16, and we're going to do a switch port mode access, and then switch port, port, Swiss W-I-T-C-H, port, access VLAN 20, and then we're going to exit that interface range FA0 17 through 23, and that's going to be switch port SWITCH, I keep doing that, mode access, and then switch port access VLAN 30. Now we could exit that, let's do interface FA0 24, switch port mode trunk, and then switch port native VLAN 40. Did I create VLAN 40? No, maybe. Do show VLAN brief. I did not create VLAN 40, so we will go ahead and create VLAN 40 now. Exit VLAN 40 name native, okay? All right, so we are good on the switch. Let's just go ahead and plug our computers in. We need to plug them all in using a straight through cable. And again, it matters now which port you're using because we uh, separated broadcast domains on the switch. So this will be 9, I think, and then this will be uh, something over 17 or 18. Let's just do a 19. It's in the middle. Okay, so these are all in different broadcast domains now. And now we need to set up our trunk port, and we're just going to use 00 to port 24 on the switch. Again, that, re that matters. Now we need to go into the router. No. We need to do um, enable config T, and then we need to do interface FA 0 slash 0 0.1 encapsulation dot 1Q 10, and then we need to do IP address 192.168.1.1.255.255.255.0, and then we also need to do um, oh. Exit interface FA0. I forgot we're not putting a router on this or a, ser a dedicated server on here. So interface FA00 and cap dot 1Q20 IP address 192.168.2.1255.255.255.0 and then end or exit. And then we need to do interface FA0.0.3 and cap dot 1Q. 30 IP address 192.168.3.1.255.255.255.0 exit and then we need to do interface FA0 slash 0 0.4 and cap dot 1Q native oh, 40 native okay exit now we need to set up our DHCP pool, but we need to set up how many? Well, we have three different networks communicating to this router, so we need to set up three. And to do that, IP DHCP pool, and we're going to do um, left, and then we are going to do default router is going to be 192.168.1.1. 
right? And then we need to do network 192.168.1.0.255.255.255.0. Exit IP DHCP pool middle. And then we, t we can do default router 192.168.2.1. Network 192.168.2.0.255.255.255.0. And exit. And then we need to do IP DHCP pool right. IP or default router 192.168.3.1 network 192.168.3.0.255.255.255.0 exit and then we can do uh, well that's it oh we need to do interface FA00 no shut and everything comes up do right and let's wait for this link light to come up and now that they came up, we could go ahead and look at our devices. And here we could see if we select DHCP, everything comes in nicely for us, okay? I'm not gonna test this. We are running out of time here. And you can see I've already configured this switch. I already set up everything like I did on this network, except I did not program the router yet, okay? So go ahead and set up your three VLANs. Just if you have to rewind the video, set up everything like you did on this, like I did on this one on this network, then add your server. And we plug the server in to VLAN 10. Any port on VLAN 10 will suffice, okay? I'm gonna address this guy to 192.168.1.2, and default gateway is gonna be 192.168.1.1, and let's go ahead and add our services, okay? Uh, services, so we gotta do DHCP, and let me just open this up, and we have to add three now, okay? So I'm just gonna use the server pool as the VLAN 10, so 192.168.1.2, uh, one and then one we're going to use three and we're only going to give it 20 save and now we need to uh, just do two we're going to give that two and that two add right and then we need to do three three and three okay add so that's good oh, we got to turn it on turn that on now the computer and vlan 10 will and indeed get access because he is in the same subnet, right? So he's he's communicating directly to that. But anything else outside the subnet, remember we separated the broadcast domains on the switch, so we gotta do our sub interfaces. Let's go ahead and enable config T, interface FA0 slash 0 0.1, uh, and cap dot 1Q10, IP address, 192.168.1.1255255255.0 and here we will do an IP helper address 192.168.1.2 exit interface FA0 0.2.1Q and I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so we don't run out of time go ahead and do this for interface 2 and 3 and once you address all those encapsulation subinterfaces, do an interface FA0 slash 0, no shutdown, do write memory. And now once that link light comes on, we will have DHCP access to the rest of our hosts, okay? Let me pause the video. And now that you see the link light come back on, we can just go ahead and take any of our computers, select it over to DHCP, and it will populate the information for us, okay? So there you got to see how we have two different broadcast domains with a dedicated web server and the IP helper command. We also got to see, again, two broadcast domains, two subnets using the router as a server. We got to see uh, the router as a server through a VLAN network, an inter-VLAN routing network, and the same network, which is being routed, inter-VLAN routing, with a dedicated DHCP server. All right, guys, so I hope you found this helpful, and if you have any questions, again, you can reach out to me, and, uh, well, I'll see you later.